this site is typical of any other site that you were to visit where you come from. We're going to be charging in a coffin, so I hope you don't mind that. And what you will witness when we charge in that coffin is that with every single coffin we have a little detail pass card and we will check the details of that card against the details on the coffin plate. It's the details on the plate that we're concerned with and we will look for a full name, we will look for a date of death and we will look for an age. And if those three details match the details on our pass card, we'll cremate. If one of those details is wrong, we don't cremate. And that's the assurity that you will be passing back to families that you meet, that we are cremating the right body and everything is as it should be, okay? When we charge in that coffin, we don't interfere with anything, all right? We take it as it is, and on a trust basis, we hope, really hope, that the contents of the coffin is compliable to all the standards. The clothing that the body is dressed in are all natural fibers, nothing man-made. So anything cotton, that's fine. Wool, that's fine. Leather, that is fine. We don't open that coffin to have a look. We know that people will put in photographs and letters. That's okay. But we hope that they don't put in really big cuddly toys or fill the coffin with books and Bibles. We have seen that because that takes a bit of a job to actually cremate. Glass, you'll see a fairly good form of a skeleton. There'll be a lot of box from the coffin remains around it at this stage. There's a little bit of tissue left, not, not a great deal, but you'll find the head at this end going down towards the, the foot end of the body. Can reach up to 1130 degrees while the cremation is going on, depending on the size of the body and uh, what it's got to cremate, basically. The gas usage is minimal. We might have to use the gas burner for the last 10 minutes of the cremation. Throughout the majority of the process, it's just forced air into the chamber. There's already the heat that's built up, and then you've got the material, which is the coffin and the body. So that forms your triangle to create fire, and that will do and generate the cremation, all right? Um, the dark material that you see, there is still the tissue, and it's all around the core of the body, so from the hips up to the neck, all right? That is the last part to be cremated. Apart from that, we often find that the brain is the last as well. That takes quite a while to be cremated. The brain is solid, and the skull around it is solid. It takes a while to get into that and break that down, all right? But while we see that, we know the cremation isn't finished. The first stage is the cremation itself. The second stage, which you, you will get to see, but not just yet because we're not ready, is you'll see the remains being drained down to the end of the cremation. When that breaking up process happens, everything is pulled in this direction to an area that sits just behind the charge doors, all right? And it's like a mini chamber, and everything gets right into that point. Now, when I say everything, all the tissue has been burnt up. There's no tissue. You'll find the bone, bone remains and also glowing embers of the coffin, all right? That does take quite a while to get rid of. So whatever it is left, we will break into that chamber. It's blasted with cold air. The cold air will do two things. It will burn off all those glowing embers of the coffin, and it will also start to cool down the bone remains, all right? That's the second stage. Sorry, it's not gonna you with this. shows you how far back the chambers go. We can take a maximum coffin size of seven foot long by 29 and a half inches wide. Uh, that's a small cremator. Sorry, I'll do this at an angle. You're watching his knee with that. Scream, scream, fire attack you. I'll try not to.
third stage of the cremation, all right? When after about an hour, we bring everything down, we release the damper plate, and it all drops down into a cooling tray. And this is the remains. And if you have a look there, you'll find there's no coffin. Obviously, all the tissue has been cremated. They are purely the bone remains. You might find some coffin fittings, small industrial staples. When that is hand touch cold, we then actually remove that from the system, transfer it into a room across from us where we've got a pulverizer. And in that pulverizer, we have about 15 large pull bearings and a big drum that turns, just like a washing machine, without the method of course. And the remains are put in there for about 12 minutes. And when that process is finished, we have the granular, gritty, sandy material. So it's not dust, it is like granular, it's, it's sandy. It's, and you can determine the bone color. And we store that until it's collected. That pass card, which we checked against the coffee plate, it stays in this position, there we are, when we are doing the cremation. When we go to the second stage, we drop that pass card onto the door. So we know that's in the second stage. When we come to this third stage, there's a little clip that's above the, the lid, and the pass card is put into that position. We know that that is the same body all the way through the processes. And when that card gets transferred into a, a pulverizing room and attached to a, a casket or a polyurn, we know full well when we pass by those remains, they are the right remains. There's never been a mistake. It's, it's physically impossible 